So next speaker is Artur. Artur, he, he knows how to get his, himself out of the place. Yeah, he can put the presentation <laughs> by his own. Yeah. <laughs> so Artur, so I, I can present to you Artur. So because, uh, yeah, I mean, he just started uh, his uh, Bachelor. <laughs> so he has a passion for space and software. So and is combining his dedication to open source space exploration. He founded the Libre Cube initiative that you you you're going to hear about now. Uh, some years ago. So that's when you start to get old that you say that. <laughs> After I studied in Germany and Taiwan, I think that's where you made your first CubeSat, right, Arthur? Uh, almost ten years uh, uh, from from now, he's a spacecraft operators engineer at ESOC, so the European Space Agency Operation Center, and he believes that we should strive for using more space standards for CubeSats in a more elegant way. So he likes to say in a Pythonic way. And I know that one is already like that. Yes. So, so Arthur, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, let's go uh, and uh, tell us more about uh, DeepWorldCube. So this open source ecosystem for space and Earth exploration. Thank you, Red. Thank you, Mantos. So LibreCube open source ecosystem for exploration missions. LibreCube, LibreCube.org, that's the website. And there you will see that uh, LibreCube is built on these three pillars um, that are shown here. So it's open source. So everything we do uh, at LibreCube is open source and we only use open source tools. So you need a computer, and internet connection, and then you can contribute. Uh, we also focus on using um, free and open standards, space standards uh, mostly, from ECSS and CCSDS, and uh, those are the same standards that are being used by uh, ESA, NASA, JAXA, and also space industry. And we are we want uh, we're using those as well. And then the third one is the reference architecture. So what is that? It's basically um, a menu or like a, like a card uh, where you have these different building blocks and you can choose the, choose the building block that you need, a bit like Lego, and then you build your exploration system. Uh, but there's more to the picture. So that would be... Uh, an, an overall view of uh, your mission. You have your um, space and so remote segment. So the machines, um, satellites, rovers that do your mission operations uh, that, that uh, you're using to conduct your mission. But uh, in order to control them, you have antennas to interface them and uh, those stream the data um, connect to your operation center. And during this CubeSat, conferences, CubeSat workshops, and also this open source CubeSat workshop, we talk about a lot about CubeSats, and we talk a lot about antennas, but we don't really talk a lot about a lot about this mission operations aspect. Uh, also, Freddie just mentioned it actually, that he needs, they need more um, to focus in this direction, so more support on operations and automations. So this is all under the, the umbrella of mission operations. Uh, I work as a spacecraft operations engineer. I work in such an operation center. So I know that there's a lot of things to do. And in fact, when you run a space mission, the most of the time you should spend is on the mission operations and not on the development. Uh, so you want to have a yeah, long running mission, generating a lot of data and then uh, making this data available to the users. And you can see here on this uh, diagram, you have uh, these building blocks or these uh, high-level high um, system elements, and they connect to each other via interfaces. For example, let's have a look at this base link. And uh, luckily, this is very well defined in the CCSDS standards and, um, and ECSS. So on all the different layers, so for a telecommand chain, so for the commands going up to your, uh, your, to your satellite, and also for the telemetry, everything that's coming back, you have a fully defined protocol stack 
from the bottom, you have the modulation uh, channel coding, the, the frames, um, the packets, it's called space packets. So it's very similar to terrestrial internet, um, but for space. And on the top level, we focus on the application layer. We focus here on the packet utilization standard from ECSS and on the file delivery protocol. And for most of these, uh, or many of those upper layer um, stack uh, layers, we have um, developed already some prototypes. Good. So this would be an interface. Um, but now let's look at this aspect of mission operations center, this element. If we zoom in, we see that it's composed also of a number of building blocks. And um, so here on this left side, you would have these SLE service that connect to your ground station. These are just the acronyms of the different services. So for the telecommand chain and for the telemetry chain, and these connect directly to your mission control system. And then you have, um, other systems to support this and you have eventually you want to distribute this data to your users scientists or consumers um, here we don't really have a standard to my knowledge uh, available but so this has to be defined and uh, yeah we're still thinking about what to use maybe a rest or zero mq um, but okay so you have a lot of building blocks and imagine now the following that's the nice thing of a of a, the beauty of our ecosystem that if you would start to develop a simulator framework and this has been defined by ecss so there's a standard on how you can how you should construct such a simulator and how you co should construct those uh, models that are being run in the simulator for example the environment model uh, so of the space environment or for your orbit uh, determine um, orbit propagation or for your CubeSat. Uh, the, and imagine the following, that you have this simulator infrastructure that is open source, everyone can use it. Plus you have a model of your CubeSat, which is tailored to your specific mission, but it should be relatively easy for other missions, CubeSat missions to take your adaptation or your configuration and tune it to their, to their own CubeSats because CubeSats, they all look very similar. So have very similar um, properties. Five minutes already, wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so that would be great. Sharing and reducing costs and working all together. So that's the simulator. There's many other building blocks that uh, to work on. Let's have a quick look into the mission control system, how it would look like. Uh, this is just a part of it. Um, that would be the, the incoming of your data as a telemetry chain. And uh, well, you see then the next, the frames would be uh, taken out from that. And then finally the uh, space packets would be taken out from that. And then further down the chain, you would get the parameters from your onboard housekeeping service. So there's of course much more to it, but what I want to tell you is that those processing building blocks are defined as Docker containers. So you can spin them up uh, very quickly and you can make them redundant. So if the machine that runs this uh, data link A service would fall down, then you would uh, use the B service and reconnect to there. And actually you can have it running in hot or cold redundancy. Good, so that's, um, and, and this we can exercise for all these elements. So we can always zoom in and we can find out that there's, um, that these things have more building blocks and they have more interfaces. And the goal here is to yeah, standardize or agree on mostly those interfaces. The content of the boxes are more or less up to the developers as long as they fulfill these interfaces and the specifications. And this would be an overall view of a CubeSat system. I'm sure you can fit uh, all the CubeSats that be being presented here. They could fit in the scheme. And I think it's important to use also a common naming scheme so that we all know what we're talking about. Let's do a quick uh, overview of the um, projects that we worked on this year. Well, some of them, so the SLE protocol, I mentioned that's the one to connect to, uh, well, for example, the ESA ground stations or NASA ground stations. We have written a SLE Python uh, API for it. 
and we tested it. So what we did is we were tracking the cluster satellites. They send over S band continuously. They send data. And there's a ground station in Taiwan that, uh, so NSPO is the Taiwan Space Agency. They were just, you know, pointing at a satellite and receiving the data, uh, well, the, the data stream. And then we connected here with our Python user interface to their machines. So they opened the network for us very, very nicely. Uh, and then we could receive the frame information and, and the data. So this thing totally works. Um, yeah, then some more, okay, link predict. Um, so that's to, that we also use to predict the link budget to make sure that we actually can receive a good signal of these satellites. So we utilized uh, this tool. Um, then another project we worked a bit on, but it's mostly dormant now, is 3D visualization in the browser. Uh, of course, it's using 3GS JavaScript library in the background. But in the foreground, you as a programmer, you can program it in Python. We have written a wrapper for it. So you can use your Pythonic way of uh, coding those 3D visualizations. Uh, on the hardware side, this is a bit actually uh, from last year, this project, uh, but still still ongoing. And we are refining it a bit. It's basically the, the onboard CAN bus so that the uh, onboard computer, central onboard computer can communicate, communicate with all the nodes, power system, communication system, and so on. Uh, but the most focus was this year on the CCSDS file delivery protocol. We just heard about the interplanetary file, uh, file system. So maybe this is something that we can fit in here because uh, here the, um, this is a protocol which has which was designed, it's a bit like FTP, but it's made for space application. So in this protocol, make sure that you get your file from ground to the spacecraft or the other way around, even if you're traveling at Jupiter and have 40 minutes of, of a delay and, and sending that file. So we have done a test here and this was mostly done in the frame of a Google uh, summer of code. Um, Zara, Shayan, Siddharth, they were working on this and they also made a nice GUI for it. So very nice experience here. And for this year, uh, well, for next year, we plan, first of all, to make a bit more regular meetings. You're all invited to that. We coordinate on the chat. So to get the momentum uh, rolling. Uh, and yeah, the focus is more on, will be more on the ground segment because it's purely software development, and we can do this very good from home. Um, but uh, also, if if you would like to contribute further to this one-use structure or the power system, which we all have in the pipeline, uh, then you're very welcome to push those projects forward. And uh, to, yeah, especially if you enjoy working with hardware. Good, so this completes, concludes my talk. Um, I'm happy if you visit librocube.org and join the chat. And I'm happy to uh, answer your questions if you have any. Red, I cannot hear you. Now you're double muted. Oh, is it possible to integrate Statnox or R2 Cloud? Yeah. Theoretically, this should be all possible because at some point in this uh, overall schematic, there's an interface to a ground station and also to a database. So if this interface is not, does not support it yet, then, uh, well, it's up to you potentially to create an interface for it. I'm back. Yes, so that you're back. Yeah, you can hear me. All right. Cool. Arthur. Yes. I have, I have a question for you. How do you, how do you feel the, the engagement and um, you know, the reaction to the project? So, because I feel like you're 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 an engine a driver for most of the applications, and um, how do you see that? Uh, 
yeah. you know, growing up. Yeah. Tell me that's that. actually uh, the, I I always find this. Uh, for example, the Python project or, or the Linux project. I always find it amazing how they how they make these things work to coordinate uh, a large audience and a lot of contributors, but still follow a, a common path. Um, yeah, I still find this not so easy. So we have um, a bit of fluctuation here uh, because people join over these opportunities like Google Summer of Code. But the question is how to keep them engaged further. Yeah. Um, so maybe this also leads to the question of bounties. Yeah. So would it be feasible to offer them some financial support? We try to do this during various opportunities, but mostly I'm looking also forward to yeah, voluntarily contributors. Um, and in return, you, I mean, we're working on technology that maybe sounds a bit profound if I talk about file delivery. Uh, doesn't sound like too exciting, but this is, this at is ESO, for example, right? this is um, it's like the future of, of how ESA is going to operate the satellites, file-based operations. So if you have this in your CV, I think that's a good asset already. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's good to sell the CV. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Thibaut, I see you're typing. Oh, uh, Mona. Yes, I, I was writing it just uh, to say, uh, Arthur, uh, we are like, I'm going to see uh, in my team, we're super, super uh, interested in this kind uh, of uh, development. And uh, I'm going to like stay in touch with you to, to see how we can collaborate or do something together because it's, uh, uh, I see the future of what we're doing. So I'm super interested. Very nice. Regular meeting from Thibault, from Isai, France. Good. Mona Abde S. Uh, Salam, uh, you, you have a question. You can, you can take the microphone if you want. Turn on the microphone. I don't think I see more her anymore. Okay, disconnecting the. Maybe this one was more like a bye bye. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, 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 Arthur. Okay, all right. So, uh, any any last uh, recommendation for anyone out there on the how to contribute or anything? Yeah, tomorrow we are going to have also the um, um, the discussion on the mission control systems yeah. um, in the afternoon, and uh, I'm going to present uh, a number of um, projects like Open MCT and and some open source uh, mission control systems, and I would be happy to hear about. Uh, people who have worked with, them, with, with those projects about the experience and to discuss also some shortcomings and, well, right. if we, if we uh, will start, uh, how we can fiddle this all together and make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see where are the missing pieces where we need contribution maybe. And yeah, nice. Thanks, Arthur. We have no more Thank questions you. here. And